This is a reading from the Holy Spirit through the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was eating at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abram looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord. Do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so that you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, get three seahs of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. And then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to his servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set those before him. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife Sarah? asked them. The men, there in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the, end of the, at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, Am I worn out and is my Lord, and after I am worn out and my Lord is old, I will now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul to the church in Colossae as to us. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tony and Alice, thank you for sharing with us the word of the Lord this morning. It it is a joy and a privilege to be about the sharing of the word of the Lord with God's people, even as we now hear uh, the message of the Lord from the gospel, uh, the Luke chapter 10 today. Come, friends, and let's pray together. Lord, thank you for giving us discerning hearts and ears to, to hear your word and know that which is best in life to choose as your people. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts now, each one of us individually and together, be for your glory and praise as you work through us in Jesus. In his saving name we pray. Amen. On the back side of your announcements, there's a 
There's a bulletin, an outline, if you want to follow along and, and take some notes, please feel free to do so. Uh, as we continue in this theme for us, this Pentecost season, this season of spiritual growth, renewal of life in the Lord, this theme of the fusion of faith. And what we mean by that is that God has, by a divine accomplishment, we call that the working of faith, his gift to us that we might be drawn near to him and into his ways, into his life and, and kingdom, into the salvation that Jesus has won for us. That divine accomplishment of faith brings together that which was at one time separate. Uh, like Paul wrote to the Colossae Christians, uh, our sin alienates us. You were at one time alienated from God. But faith, that gift of the Spirit, brings us then through the forgiveness that Jesus has won for us into a whole living being and a whole living being which seeks to walk in his ways and give him the glory of our lives, of which we're about as God's people, which your hearts and mine long for, to be the son and daughter of grace in life that we're called to be. And so we hear the word of the Lord for us this day, and, and we hear it in these object lessons, so to speak, of Mary and Martha meeting with Jesus. You know, so often, the, the disciples of Jesus are object lessons for us to learn from. Th this week, uh, as I was working on this message for us, and of course the word of the Lord first in any kind of preaching speaks to the preacher's heart, and then in the preacher's heart as a human being speaks to us too, as the word of the Lord uh, tackles each one of us in, in that word. I was reminded again this week of how much Mary and Martha were an object lesson for me. Uh, you know that the, one, of the, one of the favorite things I like to do at this time of year is watch the Tour de France, that, that 21-stage bicycle race through France. I know it's an acquired taste, and maybe some for some it's never an acquired taste, but I love watching the Tour de France. I love watching these guys racing from town to town, the race that takes place within each different kind of colored jersey, the different teams, their strategies. I love watching the, 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 the guys go on attack and, and see who can get to the finish line, the, all of that stuff. I just love it. Sue does not. So I was reminded this week, as I'm laying in bed at about 11 o'clock watching the Tour de France, because it's six to eight hours ahead of us, and the only time to see it, really, in its entirety, is at night. So I'm laying in bed there, and I'm watching the Tour de France, entranced on what's going on stage, whatever it was that I was watching. And Sue comes to bed. She's put Sam to bed. Our house is locked up. We're ready to quiet down for the evening. And she starts talking to me. I've got a choice to make. <laughs> do I choose what is good or do I choose what is best? I chose what is good. Well, for me. What was good for me was to stay entrenched in what I was watching. But I missed a conversation. I missed a time of prayer. I missed a time of reconnecting with my wife uh, in the end of the day and closing our lives down for the evening and cuddling and hugging each other and enjoying those blessings that we have as husband and wife. And I, because I had chosen um, something good, but not what was best. Now, Mary and Martha served as a great example for us today uh, of this object lesson of faith and life and where we're called to be as God's people. Before we start derailing Martha, and you know, so often she gets a bad rap in this, in this uh, biblical, this gospel account. Let's remember, when Jesus was traveling down the road, he came to this village, we know it as Bethany, and it was there, as we hear in the Luke, Luke chapter uh, 10, verse 38, that Martha opened her home to him. Now, first of all, Martha made a good decision there. She said, Jesus, come in, be welcomed into my home. I have the gift of hospitality, obviously, here with Martha. And she exercised that gift for the good of Jesus as he was traveling along. Good for you, Martha. Way to exercise that gift. And not only did she welcome Jesus into her home, but she went about the, the, the busyness of preparing to care for his needs. And you know, it wasn't as easy as we have it today of pulling out a frozen pizza from the, the freezer and popping into the oven, and 20 minutes later you got some food to serve. There was a lot of extra work that went on in those biblical times to care for a guest 
in your presence, like Abraham and, and Sarah experienced with the, the three guests we heard in the Old Testament reading. Good for Martha. She went about what were the things that were good for her to do, exercising her gifts. And, it, and if we stopped right there, we would have a wonderful gospel account of how we could be a living object lesson, like Martha, of hospitality. But Martha's not alone. <laughs> There's Mary. And Mary chooses what is better. Uh, she could have helped with her sister. Uh, she could have helped prepare all the things for Jesus. But, but Mary, her spirit discerning who was in the home, chose to be with Jesus, sitting at his feet maybe, listening to the teachings, the truth, the word of God and the kingdom, and, and stayed there. So we get to this verse in chapter, 40, uh, 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 42, where Jesus is confronting Martha and saying, look, Martha, Mary's chosen what is better. Maybe what you chose was good, but was it best? Mary's chosen what is better, and it's not going to be taken away from her. And wrapped up in this is the whole, the whole truth of the fusion of faith, of how that which was separate is now a whole living being, and Mary is choosing to express that in her life right now. She's expressing that I'm already fused to Jesus by this divine accomplishment of faith. I want to live in this faith. Exercise it. Be in the presence of the Lord. I want to choose what's best every day in my life. Now, Jesus is describing what she's done. This is a selecting of something, as Jesus says, as the object desired and expressing favor to that object chosen. This is what I'm favoring in my life, and I'm expressing myself in the desire to be in that object's favor. So we go back to the Tour de France. And maybe I've chosen something that's good for me, but am I choosing what's best at this point in time for the person that's most important in my life, my wife? The message I'm sending to her is the object of my favor is this bicycle race taking, having taken place eight hours earlier in France and not my relationship with you right now. Boy, do I sound like Martha. And I'm called to be like Mary. Jesus is saying to Martha, what Mary has chosen, this best is not going to be taken from her. I'm not going to take it away from her. And Martha, you can't try to take it away from her because what she's chosen is, is better. But Martha, also know this, and this is in the syntax of the Greek and as it all works out there and translated into English, Mary's not saying to you, she's not implying or giving the entire rejection of what you're doing because she didn't choose what you're doing. It's not that what you're doing is bad or wrong or ungodly, it's just not what's best. Hmm. Now that's difficult for us when we're confronted with decisions that might be okay, good, but are they competing with something, a decision, a choice that's better, that's best? You know, I, I, I can... I can justify to my wife as she's saying, talk to me. Let's pray together. Tell me how your day was. Uh, uh, the, the, the bicycle race only comes on once a year, honey. I want to watch this now. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. I could, I could say that. I could justify that for myself. But all I'm doing is reinforcing my Martha-ness, my choosing something that's okay, good, not necessarily ungodly, but not what is best. And, and we find ourselves as God's people having this internal conversation with ourselves every day. Well, what I've chosen is good, and that's okay. Maybe there's something better. Maybe God is asking me to choose something that's even better, but I'm okay with where I am right now. You know how it goes. The conversation with people at work. Well, this conversation isn't necessarily ungodly, so I'm not going to say anything that might influence them with what's better in thinking of the Lord and his ways. Or the decision that I'm going to make for myself right now isn't necessarily going to lead me down a, a, a path of, of sin or direct confrontation with the Lord. 
but I'm not going to also choose what's better for me, even though that's more challenging for my faith and life and ultimately spiritual growth. This conversation goes on among us all the time, internally, and sometimes externally, between the Tour de France and a relationship. What this does for us as human beings, what it does for us not only in relationships, but what it does for us in our spirits unto the Lord, is what Paul was talking to the church in Colossae about. It alienates us from God. And in fact, it makes us enemies in our minds because of our evil behavior. It may not be blatantly evil behavior, but choosing even what is good over what is better, being a Martha as compared to a Mary in a, in a, in a particular situation that God is challenging us to exercise faith and life, choosing what is better, sets us apart as alienated from God and shows us our evil behavior. And so Jesus says to Martha, because of Mary's choosing what is better, this is not going to be taken away from her. Her connection with me in where I want her to be is not going to be taken away from her. And isn't that the work of, of the Lord, this work of his divine accomplishment? Again, here from the book of Colossians, verse, chap, uh, chapter 1, verse 22. But, but he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through, through death. That word reconciled means to bring back together that which was once alienated, uh, separated by our sinful choices and decisions and our sinful human evil nature. It reconciles, it brings back together that which was once separated into a unity, that divine accom accomplishment of faith, so that we might live as a whole living being. It moves me to think and you and I to think about where we are in life at this point in time. And am I choosing what is best as God has called me to be his disciple? What I should do at this point in time is take the remote control and turn the TV off. Well, or at least mute it. No, no. <laughs> I should turn the TV off, right? And, and give my full attention to uh, the one that God has given to me as my, my bride, my my wife. And what is the remote control that you need to turn off as God is calling you to make a better decision, choice in life as he's leading and guiding you every day, as he's reconciled you to the purposes of his kingdom in the salvation of your soul, the forgiveness of sin, the life that we've been given in Jesus by his physical body, presenting you holy in his sight, set apart purposed for the kingdom without blemish, free from any kind of accusation. That's the work of the Lord, that we might be his people for his glory, choosing what is best. Not just good, choosing what's best every day. How is this then exercised in our lives? How do, how do we discern what is best. Well, we're given some direction today, again, to the, from the church to Colossae, where the Spirit says, first of all, continue in your faith. Uh, you're going to fail at times. You're going to be like Martha instead of Mary. Okay, recognize that. The Lord forgives that. And, and next time when you're faced with a similar kind of situation, let's choose what's, what's best then, to the glory of the Lord. But, but continue in this faith. Don't give up. Just keep going on as you are his son or his daughter. Continue in this faith. Established, firm. Don't move from the hope that's held out to you in the gospel. The good news of your salvation. Let's stay there. Let's live there. And in living there, we can be those people that are choosing each day what's best in life as a reflection of God's work. The work of Jesus in our spirits. The joyful response, we call that, of living as God's men and women. Well, here's one way, maybe. 
First of all, maybe it's a, a good place for us to start to remember that Mary and Martha, while they were object lessons of the Lord, so are you and me. And that's God's purpose. One of his purposes, at least, is to use you and me as gospel object lessons to the world. I am an object lesson to my son when I choose to turn the TV off and focus my full attention on his mother as the object of my love in that moment. I'm an object lesson to other people around me when we choose what is best, beginning in our families and in our communities and to the people that we have uh, touches with in life. We are an object lesson purposely of the Lord. So our spirits say, Lord, use me as an object lesson. I've been reconciled to you. Your divine accomplishment of faith has fused me to the perspective of your kingdom. Use me as your object lesson. And in Martha, we can also embrace the good decision that she made. Not best, but good. Recognizing that care for the needs of others is okay. Maybe that's the best decision for me right now. To care for Jesus, uh, to care for the guests in my house as if Jesus were my guest. But there may be, in the midst of this caring for others, a better decision that I need to make shortly or soon. And, and I need to convey that to those in my care. But for right now, let's take care of those needs in front of me. And when confronted then with an opportunity to make a better decision, a best decision, like Mary, to evaluate the choices and then choose what is best. That's the work of the Holy Spirit, his work of discernment to, to empower and strengthen you and me, give us clarity of mind and heart, perspective, energy, to choose what's best. To be the people who are the people of faith, fused by the Lord's work into his leading and guiding and joyful response of living and serving him every day, choosing what's best. Let's pray. Father in heaven, the joyful work of your spirit in us and among us, fusing us to your kingdom in the son that you love, fusing us in that divine accomplishment of faith, now makes us a whole living person, an object lesson of your grace to the world. And sometimes, Lord, we're going to have opportunity to, to do what's good right now, caring like Martha did for your needs. But then other times, even in the midst of that good, we're going to have an opportunity to discern what's best, like Mary. And so, Father, when those opportunities come, give us the wisdom, the insight of your spirit to choose that which is best, to know that that won't be taken from us, but that, but that we'll be living in your good graces for the glory of your name and the proclamation of your work in our lives. Uh -huh. That's what we want to be about, Lord. Your sons and daughters living for your glory. So bless us, we pray. And may we be a blessing to others as we give you thanks, as your name is honored and lifted up among us. In Jesus' name, we praise you and pray. Amen. Friends, may the peace of God that passes our understanding then so keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, as you fuse by faith into his divine plan. May you choose what is best every day in the Lord.